In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys some of the best plugins that I use in Roblox Studio. So if you guys don't know what a plugin is, basically it's just things that you can download from Roblox that help you to work more efficiently in Roblox Studio. As you can see, I have this rain falling down and I also have this sunset behind me. Both of these were from a plugin and I'm going to go over those later on in the video. Okay, so when you first open up a game in Roblox Studio, um, to get to the plugins, you just click this plugins tab right here, and here are your plugins. Um, if you haven't downloaded any yet, there's gonna be a few there anyways. Those are like the automatic ones from uh, Roblox, like Avatar Importer, View Sounds. I can't really remove those, those are just from Roblox. But the rest of these, I've downloaded. So I'm gonna start off with this first one right here, Building Tools by F3X, okay? Basically, this is just, it's kind of like trying to bring Blender into Roblox. <clears throat> Okay, so as you can see, there's all these um, hotkeys on the right side, and so let's say I press Z, right? I can just move, uh, I can press X, scale, uh, C, rotate, Z. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't really even used this that much, but it just seems to be very useful. Also, all of the plugins, the links to the plugins will be in the description. I'm not gonna go through every last one of these properties but as you can see there's a bunch of these different options okay next plugin i'm gonna go over is this place tree plugin right here um similar to the building tools by f3x um it's pretty self-explanatory it's just like um importing trees right but there's all these different settings and stuff that you can change and it's just to make your trees look better or how you want them to look for your game so for example i could just spawn in a tree right here and it's huge right spawn another one it's randomly generated, so they're different. And let's say I want the tree to be made out of wood. So just say wood, and then all of a sudden you can see the texture has changed. So it's not it's not perfect, as you can see, like overlapping in different spots. But you know, it's pretty nice. It's very convenient. It saves you a lot of time. Um, like right here, I can set a preset. I can change how tall it can be. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it a lot shorter. These are like pretty big trees. Pause. So it'd be like this. These are way too tiny. These are like bushes. So even though it's a tree generator, you could still use it to make bushes. Like this. All right. Next tool I'm gonna go over is called the Rope Master. So this tool is very useful if you're trying to make something like a bridge. Um, I actually have an example of a bridge that I made. Just give me a second. I'm gonna pull it up real quick. Okay. So this is a bridge that I made in the past for a project. And as you can see, there's these ropes here. I use this um, tool right here to make the bridge. So I'm gonna actually do a demonstration real quick. I'm just gonna make two parts and they're gonna be across from each other. So add part and another part. And then I'll scale this one up right here. Scale this up too. Okay, I'm gonna use a pre-built one. I'm gonna use this police tape one right here and begin drawing. Connect here to here. I'm gonna scrap that one right here, stop drawing. Just cause I, I need to see the like both sides. That way I can connect it properly. Okay, so begin drawing. Just click right here and then drag it over to here. And there we go. I have police tape, get another one. And you can even change like how it, how it arches. Uh, you can change how thick it is, all kinds of different things. Okay, next uh, we're gonna go over the parts terrain. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite plugins. I like to use it if I'm making like maps. So basically all it is is part to terrain. So you click on the part and it changes to the terrain of your selection. So you see that we have this huge base plate right here. I can make all of it water. So I press the water option and click on the base plate and then wait for a few seconds and boom, I got water. And so the water is just fills in the spot of the part and then you go below it, there's no more water. Basically, it just replaced the base plate with water. And it controls Z, and it goes back to normal. Next, I'm gonna go over Archimedes. Um, it sounds very fancy or whatever. Uh, all this is, is just a tool to duplicate parts in like a pathway. So as you can see, there's this automatic projection of like the next part. So I'm actually gonna make a new part. And so you can already see there's a reflection. So I want it to be like a path, and I want it to go in like a circle. So. Um, direction, uh, I'm going to flip axis, nah, swap sides, no, six and a half hours later. Alright, there we go. 
basically, if you want to like change the direction it's going, like how I just changed it from going from the side to the front, you just have to mess around with the different things under direction. So like the pitch, yaw of X and Y and Z. Um, then basically, you just change these settings of X, Y, and Z. Uh, pitch, yaw, roll, whatever. That sounds kind of like fancy, but it's really not. It's just like the direction it's going. So right now it's going forward, and I, it's going to turn slightly at an angle. Okay? And so let's say I want to render one. It's slowly going down. I don't want to go down. I want to go sideways. So if I just go back a few... Okay, there we go. I just changed X yaw, and I render, and it makes this. And if I press render all, it's going to keep going until it loops back. So I can make the circle like I said. So if I just press render all, it's gonna keep going. Make all these parts, 119 parts, all the way until it comes back, it loops around. Okay, and now you can see we have our part. If I wanted to be less detailed like this in a game, this would not be ideal because it's too many parts. But if I made it like slightly bigger, uh, I would lose it on detail, but it would be a lot more efficient for my game. Or I could also just make the angle sharper. And as the angle goes up, there's less to render. So if I do it again, can't even see it. The next plugin I'm gonna go over is Drag Sun and Drag Moon. So as you can see, the sun is right there. All you have to do to use it is press drag sun and while this is like shaded in you can just move the sun wherever and the way it works is it changes in the, in the lighting settings so over here it's changing the time of day so let me just open this up so you guys can see what I'm talking about when I grab it and move it it's moving the geographical latitude okay so as you can see, I can drag the sun, so I click drag sun, and I'll drag it down here, and then the moon pops up, I can just drag moon, and I can drag the moon. The next plug I'm going to go over, this is actually the one that I probably use the most right here, toggle handles. Basically, whenever you make a part, right, especially when you're doing like with 3D models, you want your parts to be proportional in the way that they're editing. Like you want them to get bigger proportionally or get smaller proportionally. When I go like this, it's uneven. If I go like that, it's uneven. But if I wanted to keep it the same proportions, I can go to toggle handles and drag. And this red box is a projection of my model. And boom, it resizes it. So it's pretty simple, but I think this is very useful. Next, I'm going to go over brush tool. Um, the brush tool, I say it's, it's very useful, especially when you're making maps. Um, basically, it uses parts that you select. So let's say I have this grass I want to copy and paste everywhere, right? So these are just some preset models. I don't even know where they came from. But if I activate my brush, it shows this radius right here. And right here, I can change my radius and spacing. My, the radius and spacing of the part that I'm using as a brush. So if I brush over this area, now it's going to be a bunch of grass right and as you can see they look very unnatural because they're all the same exact size so if i want them to be more random i'm just gonna deactivate my verse real quick if i want them to be more random i can change the scale rotation wobble orientation okay so let's change the scale um, i can make it random i want a minimum of 0 0.5 and a max like 1.4 so now let's see how it looks it's gonna be more random as you see it looks more natural right I can continue and change multiple more things. This is a very useful plugin for smaller things like foliage or just decorations that you're using on your map. Next, I'm gonna go over the rain editor. Um, this is just what I was showing you guys earlier. So, all you do is click on this, and there's all these settings right here. Okay, and basically you can just change whatever you like. You can change the sounds, volume, how loud the rain is, transparency, color of the rain. And right here, you can just change if it's enabled or unable. Right now it's disabled, but if I press this button, it's enabled. But you still can't see it. So what you need to do is press preview slash active, and now you can see the rain. And the last plugin I'm going to go over is the Skyboxes plugin right here. So right here, we have the browser. These are just all the different options. So after New Sky, Baltic Dune, there's, there's a bunch of these preset options. So I'm going to pick one. I'll do this peaceful morning sky 
And right here, this is my preview. I can just look around and you can just see like a 360 basically. It's very nice. And it's not in frame right now if I just gotta move this up a little bit. And I can either apply or apply with that lighting. I'm just gonna press apply. And boom. Now the whole mat, like the whole environment just changed. Like it seems a lot more nice. But that's all for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and comment down below. But that's all for today's video, and I'll see you guys next time.